trick, we've made our board and our counters. Got our dice going, now let's look at how to play the game. The game is a race to get from the start space, around the board, and back to the start space. You might think of it a little bit like the old game of Ludo. It's the one I used to play when I was a kid that was kind of similar to this. So uh, let's say it's Blue's turn first. Let's roll the dice. And the result for Blue is a re-roll. Remember what we said before, the two of the counters are on top of each other. Let's them again. There we go. The roll for Blue is two Blues. I'll show you that again, okay? So it's hard to see through the side, but there's two reds, two blues. So, blue is allowed to move one piece, two spaces. Start on the start space, and then move two. One, two. Now red's turn. Okay, now how do we make sure the rolls are always fair? We count to five. One, two, three, four, five. And we stopped, and the result is two reds. So, red is allowed to move two spaces as well. One piece, two spaces. One, two. And when red ends up on the same space as their opponent, blue, they put their piece back to the start. So that's one of the rules of the game. Let's have a look at what happens to blue this time. Getting a little annoyed with that play, but that's part of the fun of the game. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, it's a boomer roll for blue because four reds means blue can move a piece once five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Now blue's actually landed on one of the intersection spaces. Come back to that in a minute on blue's next turn. If you land directly on an intersection space, that gives you some special options. But we'll look at that next turn. Okay, Red's turn. He's got a bit of catching up to do now. One, two, three, four, five. And Red's rolled three. Okay, so Red's got two options now. Red can roll and move one, space, one piece, three spaces. One, two, three. Which would, of course, bump a blue back again. Or bring another piece on the board. Bring another piece on the board. Doesn't always pay to be too aggressive with the other player. You've got to concentrate on your own game as well. Let's have a look. What's going to happen for blue this time? One, two, three, four, five. Blue has rolled. Oh, did I nudge that? Hmm, not allowed to do that. One, two, three, four, five. Just one this time. So, blue's got two choices to either move this one space or bring another piece on the board and move it to here. Blue's actually going to move this one out of the danger zone. Blue stays here. A roll of two or three next turn, red could bump blue back. Blue's going to move into the shortcut. Because blue landed on an intersection, blue has the option to use the shorter route. Okay? And the same applies at any and of the four intersections. If blue ends up exactly on this space with a move, they can then use another shortcut and get home very quickly. So that was blue's turn. Let's do one more roll of red. Now, let's say that is red one, okay? Now, Red has some interesting choices. Red could bring another piece on the board. Or, Red could move this one to the same space as the one in front of it. Okay? Now, what that means is not that the piece is sent back. If it had moved to a space occupied by a blue piece, the piece would go back to the start of the game. But what happens now is these two pieces, for the rest of the game, are moved together. Okay, we'll show you what you mean and what we mean by that in a minute. Another blue turn. Three, four, five. Blue's rolled one again. So blue's going to bring another piece on the board, starting at the start space and moving one space. Okay. Red's turn again.
Oh, a lovely roll from red. Now, it's three reds. Red could bring another piece on the board. One, two, three. And it would join these two and they would all move together. But I don't know that red wants to do that. But unfortunately, red must move. You can never pass on a move. What would happen is red would go one, two, three. Now red did not stop exactly at the intersection, so red must continue with the two pieces around the outside track. Maybe hoping to get the shortcut at the top of the board. And that's pretty much how the game goes. Pieces that end up together must keep moving together. If you land Let's say blue was able to roll a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's say blue rolled 4 reds and was able to move 5 spaces, come all the way to here. Then both red pieces would have to go back to the start. Now that means, you know, what that's telling you is it's a risky strategy to, to stack your pieces, to put them together. Because they are at greater risk of getting sent back. And that's really how the game works. All we've really got to look at now is the end game. How does a piece get home? And this is where you've got an interesting negotiation to make with whoever you're playing. Um, I can't remember what I was taught when I first learnt the game from uh, a Korean person. But there's obviously two options. One is that you must get the exact number back to the start space. Or you must simply move to the start space by any number and it doesn't matter if it's higher. So what I mean by that is if blue is here and blue made a roll of three, that would be one, two, with one left over. The third one is simply not used and the three, two, three, blue is home and moves off the board. That, that seems to be an easy way to finish the game. Just to say any sort of roll will get you home. A more challenging way would be to say you must have the exact roll. An interesting other variation would be say a roll of four allows you to go one, two, and then take any direction, either backwards, three, four, or three, four. Now that creates quite an interesting strategy because it puts you potentially out of the way of counters behind you that could bump you off. So really, it's up to you. Like with many of the games I teach, they're very simple. And the nicest thing of a simple game is that there is room for you to create your own variation. So I think have a little discussion with your players. If that doesn't seem that much fun, change it around. And that's the game of Ute. Hope you enjoy it. Make yourself a bigger board if you want. If you're playing with the, the larger counters, when they do manage to land on a space together, you can stack them. You can play in teams, a red team and a blue team, two or three players per team. Of course the larger the teams, the longer you need to wait for a turn. So when one player on the blue team's had a turn, the next round a different player on the blue team has a turn. I think that works much better with a larger board on the floor and really being able to throw these uh, counters. So creating a little container or an area where you can really throw those dice throw them up against something even, up against a wall or something like that, but they don't end up going everywhere. That can be a, a really fun way to play this game. Just dice a good throw or go out and find yourself some of the sticks. So enjoy!